Howdy there, my name is Dan Campbell. Welcome to the Game Tester Academy, the only YouTube channel to one sweep all the categories of the Latin Grammys. If you were to ask somebody outside of the QA department what exactly a QA tester's job is, they'd probably give you the short answer of, to find bugs, duh. And you know what, they're 100% right. But I'm sure many of you have the same question that I've been asked dozens of times is, how do you actually find the bugs? And my response is always the very frustrating, it's complicated. Now I'd love to give you a nice, simple, concise answer, but I'm afraid there's just a lot more nuance to it than that. But hopefully by the end of this episode, you'll have a better handle on what it takes to actually spot a bug so you can report it. Now there's different methods of recognizing different types of bugs in different areas of the game. Let's say you're doing some mission testing and you notice a critical piece of a HUD element is just a little bit off the edge of the screen, making one of the numbers maybe a little bit obscured. Now to the mission tester, this might not be a big deal at all. They might not even really notice it. But to a standards tester, this is a really big deal. This is the kind of thing that could absolutely cause your game to fail submission. So spotting that bug as a mission tester and as a certification tester, can yield wildly different results and different priority bugs. So even within the complexities of just finding a bug, there's even more complexities on how you would actually find it and what kind of bug it actually is. It's sort of like some kind of weird Schrodinger's cat or Schrodinger's bug, I guess, uh, that, you know, depending on who is actually viewing the bug, changes it considerably. It might be a low priority or a high priority. Depends on the QA tester that finds it and what they see in it. But how does the certification tester actually know that that's a bug? How do they spot that this weird thing happening with the HUD can actually cause a very major certification problem? Really, the short answer is experience. So it can be really complex to say how to spot a bug whenever to one tester, a bug might not mean anything or even register as a bug at all. Whereas to another tester, it could be considered a pretty huge deal. So how does a certification tester know that that's a certification bug? Experience. Or how does an art tester manage to notice that very subtly floating piece of debris above the ground? Again, the answer is experience. And to be honest, that is my short version of this answer. Experience really is key whenever it comes to knowing how to spot bugs. It's incredibly difficult to tell someone exactly what they should be looking out for whenever they're doing testing, especially something like art testing. It's very difficult to tell someone exactly what they should be looking out for whenever we're there to find the flaws, the things that we don't know what we're looking for, we just know it when we see it. A bug is something that's really kind of hard to plan to see. It's something you just kind of run into and you know it and recognize it whenever you've encountered it. And there's honestly really no great way of learning it out of a book or off of a YouTube video. You kind of just have to experience it. Like art testing is a great example. There's literally dozens of events and systems and elements that come together to make a video game's world. And that means also hundreds if not thousands of ways for bugs to manifest themselves. So like, say, how would I teach someone how to spot an art bug? It really depends on the bug. With Z-Fighting, I'd say just keep an eye open for flickering textures whenever the camera's in motion. Floating objects? Train your eye to notice the difference in movement speed whenever you're moving your camera across the terrain. Holes in the geometry? I'd say make sure your surroundings, skybox, and lighting are nice and bright so you can spot the seams and holes more easily. Models without collision? Well, this one I say take your player character and have them make sweet, sweet love to every surface in the game until they manage to clip into one of them. And that's not even getting into all the details about how many of these bugs I just mentioned actually aren't art bugs at all. Sometimes they have to be fixed by programming, design, or animation. Confused yet? I hope not, but just know that you're not alone if you are. I've seen testers work in this job for years before they were able to develop their discerning eye for spotting bugs. And as a side note, once you do sort of develop your all-seeing eye for bugs, uh, you won't be able to turn it off. Have you ever had your immersion ruined in a game because you noticed a bug? Well, veteran QA testers kind of deal with that on a daily basis. It can make this hobby of ours seem a little less magical sometimes. It's just another instance of how learning how the sausage is made can really kind of take a little bit of the magic out of this hobby of video games. Hey, but I still love it and probably always will. And with that, I do want to apologize if you've ever asked me how do I actually spot bugs and I answered you with the uh, perplexing, it's complicated. Just know that I'm not purposely trying to be obtuse or sort of squirrel away any knowledge that is just mine all mine. I like to use this analogy. 
Whenever people ask a QA tester, how do you find bugs? It's like asking a mechanic, how do you fix cars? It's not a very simple question to answer. But when it comes to video game QA, if I absolutely had to boil it down to a single talking point, it would be this, experience. Practice, practice, practice. Getting a really good eye for spotting bugs is just something you pick up as you go in this job. When I first started in QA, I was lucky if I could find five bugs a day to post. But I grew as a tester over the years, I asked my senior staff for advice, and I learned a lot just by doing the job. And now I can easily find and post five bugs before I've had my morning coffee. And honestly, you will too. I have every confidence in you. That if you're willing to put in the practice and hours that it takes to do QA, you'll eventually start to develop that QA discerning eye. And you too will be completely and horribly cursed to have video games ruined just a little bit for you for all the rest of time. It's important to have goals, I guess. Anywho, that's it for this episode of the Game Tester Academy. But thank you so much for coming. My name is Dan Campbell. I hope you learned something and happy hunting. Here's where YouTube tells me where I'm supposed to instruct you to like and subscribe and all that. But you're smart. You're intelligent. If you want to do those things, you can find them on your own. You don't need me to do that, right? Right? That means you did it already without me saying anything. See, I knew you were a genius. I'll see you in the next one.